Hi, I'm Kenny Rittenhouse. I'm with the Kenny Rittenhouse Septet. We're going to be playing over at the club at 2 p.m. Sunday, February 16th. Come by and check out the band. Uh, my band is the, uh, I have a Septet. We just did a record about a year ago called the New York Suite. In the band, we have Lyle Link on tenor saxophone, Antonio Orta on alto saxophone, Mr. Reginald Sinche on trombone, Alan Johnson on the piano, Romare Mendez on bass, and J.C. Jefferson Jr on the drums and we're going to be playing some mostly original content of mine and one of the original songs of uh, Alan Johnson's. Uh, well this is my uh, second CD recording. It's a three uh, movement suite I wrote for my wife Stacy who happens to be from New York. Uh, it includes Last Train to Harlem, Kayla's Song and East 21st Street. It's a pretty fun uh, original suite that we did. We also uh, have an original tune on there by Alan Johnson called Let Me Loose. Uh, we love playing that chart. It's a nice hard swinging chart. And we have a couple other tunes on there that, that feature uh, Reginald Cinch on the trombone. That, that tune is called Ballot for Blue, and Blue happens to be the name of my son. And we have a few other tunes on there that feature Lyle Link. Um, and uh, features pretty much everyone in the band. Some hard swinging tunes. We have a beautiful arrangement of Amazing Grace that I did on my first record, but I just changed it up a little bit for this band. And we also have a tune that I wrote for my sister called Penelope. And at the end of that chart, we get into a nice uh, gospel feeling. So I uh, hope you'll check that out. So I've been playing jazz trumpet for quite a while. And uh, some of my greatest influences are Clifford Brown, Lee Morgan, and Freddie Hubbard. Those are my main influences as a trumpet player. So when I write songs or when I'm improvising um, with the band, I pretty much have those three guys in mind. And they've uh, really shaped the way I've played in the last 20 years. One of the questions I'm always asked by a lot of my friends who are really non-musicians non is how can I track them to, to, uh, to traditional jazz in the, in, the, in the modern world here? And I tell them, well, we just play things that you like to hear. I play things that I like to hear that sounds good and doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be from the 1920s and it doesn't have to be electronic, hip-hop, go-go, any type of music. It can be a combination of all that. It just has to sound good. And I think if jazz musicians start really paying attention to their audiences, we can attract a lot more to this music. Well, when I started playing the trumpet, um, I didn't really know too much about classical or jazz. I just liked playing the trumpet. I, had, I happened to be pretty decent at playing the trumpet. So in my early days, I was pretty much influenced by Maynard Ferguson and of all the people, Chuck Manjoan. And up until about 20 years ago, I was still a much better classical trumpet player than I was a jazz musician. It wasn't until I came to Washington, D.C and started playing with the jazz community and going to uh, jam sessions and workshops every week, that's when I really started to learn really what this music was about and being introduced to all the different artists in the music community. Uh, one of my greatest influences was Louis Armstrong and after that was Wynton Marsalis and Miles Davis. And probably those three um, musicians were had a, the greatest effect on my on my jazz playing and my love of jazz, which of course then sent me to Freddie Hubbard and Clifford Brown and, and uh, cats like B. Morgan. Well, before I came to Washington, D.C., I went to, uh, uh, got my undergraduate degree in West Virginia as a classical trumpet player and then did a little bit of work at the Eastman School of Music and Duquesne School of Music. And then won a job here at the U.S. Army Band here in Washington, D.C. And now I play in the uh, U.S. Army Blues uh, big band. And I also play in the Smithsonian Massworks Jazz Orchestra and I also go up to Pittsburgh and play the Pittsburgh Jazz Orchestra with Sean Jones. So doing all of those um, keeps me heavily into the, the jazz scene and also teach uh, jazz trumpet at George Mason University. And as far as jazz education goes uh, in this country, it's, it's really uh, flourishing right now, which is interesting because the jazz market uh, is still around the same where it's, where it's been a number of decades. Um, but the number of jazz programs in colleges are increasing every year. And I think it's important because I think the, the, the number of venues for young musicians to go to on a consistent basis is not as plentiful as it used to be in the 40s and the 50s and 60s. So in some of these schools and colleges and universities, you have a little bit of a student jazz community, so to speak, where they have a chance to collaborate and play with other musicians and learn that way. But I tell my students every day that I'm just here teaching you a little bit, but you have to come out to the clubs, to the concerts, and interact within the jazz community, because that's your best jazz education. <laughs>